come back to another video. So I didn't get much time to do anything with the golf because from my knowledge I have to remove the block and then I would have to send it for a reball. Currently it's standard so I need a one, it needs to be 20,000 reball. But the engine does have some life left in it so I was contemplating whether um, try to reduce it because number one piston I'll, I'm going to show you on the block number one piston is actually scraping the ball on all sides and the piston also has a lot of scrapage I'm gonna put that up for you guys to see so I'm thinking maybe uh, my friend has a spare engine there maybe just want to take out one piston see the condition slap it on this car and maybe sort the valve stem seals out and run like that until the motor finally fails because these engines are quite golf one engines are quite cheap it's pointless now going and spending the one two for a rebo and then buying complete pistons and rings and you know bearings and whatever whatever because let me just explain a very i think it's a crucial thing that i need to explain to everybody mind the dragon can yeah i needed to drink something and uh, i was just thirsty for the dragon but let me explain the basics of your piston you have your top of the piston right everybody knows the top of the piston once you remove the cylinder head you can see the top of the piston then you would have your ring glands and then you would have your skirt of the piston there's ways where you can lose compression let's just say your motor is weak and you assume like a lot of old school mechanics just tell you slap on a pair of rings and bearings and then you are sorted out but that's not the case because I'm going to use this sphere here the circle as illustration purpose just imagine it's a cylinder ball right just imagine this piston goes into that ball it needs to be a perfect circle now over time due to wear and age this ball will get worn out from being a perfect circle it's going to become an oval just like this and if you look at your piston how it runs in the in the block of the engine the conrod moves as the conrod is moving it goes up and down it needs to go up and down straight now what happens when the cylinder ball is worn out the piston starts to rock as it's rocking it's damaging the skirt of the piston and it's damaging the cylinder wall i'm going to show you that quickly Can you see here the cylinder walls one if you look carefully i know it's a video but if you look carefully you will notice that the cylinder bore is no more a perfect circle it became an oval shape look at it it's not a, it's, it's more out this way here you guys would think replacing this ring will make up for that but at the same time the ring is is a perfect circle it's meant to be into a perfect circle so it cannot be like it gets compressed yes but it cannot it cannot reshape itself to an oval and that is why what will happen if it's in that perfect cylinder ball you would have good compression on that side and this side and then all the compression on this this end and that end will just go into the sump causing a weak motor that's the same issue that i've been having with this golf one here and obviously the car can't run like this for a couple k's more it can run like this for a lifetime until it gives up but it's good for you guys to know let's just say you take your engine for somebody to get rebuilt and then they tell you that you just need to change rings and bearings so you would know you would tell them pull a piston out let me check for myself let me make sure everything is fine and you won't get ripped off because it's quite sad when you split an engine up completely you remove everything and then you just change rings and bearings and you put the engine back and the engine doesn't perform as well and then afterwards you wasted all that money when you can take that same money and rebore the engine buy oversized pistons to make up for the rebore and you will be sorted that way there like in my case now i'm contemplating because i have a piston here that's really worn out and then i have a piston here one of my friends gave it to me uh it's also from 1.4 i'm just not sure if it's uh injected or carbureted but yeah this is normal wear on a piston skirt you can see like light 
very light damages but it's not supposed to be like this way it's dented so badly and yeah that is piston stack so remember guys rings and bearings won't fix a cylinder ball that is over okay guys i know that like i said in the start of the video i know it's stupid to not take take up my block and reboil it and stuff i know that the engine has more keys more miles more trips to give me and the best thing i can think of now is pointless me reboarding it currently to a 20 thou. i just wanted to make sure that the bearings were fine i wanted to make sure that i wanted to physically see the condition of the piston that is why i stripped everything up if it was very bad then i would obviously remove the block straight away but now i don't think we're going to have any engine seizure or something like that while we're driving this vehicle so i'm just going to give this uh piston a slight rub down with 220 grit sandpaper and i'm going to show you guys how i install the piston back inside the ball and yeah that'll be it for this video Try to get some dirt out of the rings. Everything a good wipe up. Like I told you guys, this is the piston skirt and this is the ring glands. I'm just going to inspect, you need to inspect the ring gland to make sure that there's no cracks and chips. Inspect the rings, no damages. And then I have my top compression ring which I took out. I'm going to show you how to put that back. The rings are very fragile so... Just make sure you do it carefully so you don't break the ring. Do it evenly. And just like that, the ring is on. Inspect it one more time to see if it's broken. And everything seems good. Now, you guys need to know something important. On your piston, you're going to see an arrow pointing towards your camshaft, towards the cam belt. Right? So, there's the arrow there. Right? So, in this point here, where the gudgeon pin is on this side and the gudgeon pin is on that side, your rings, your main compression rings cannot be facing it because compression can seep through. I would suggest put this ring, first compression ring, there. Remember the arrow is facing that side. So your first compression ring, the gap must be on this end. And your second compression ring, I would want my gap on this end here. There. And then I'll take the first one. And I'll put it there. So, if you guys look at this. You're going to see the arrow is facing that way. I have one compression ring facing, the gap is facing to the bottom. One compression ring, the gap is facing to the top. And then your oil control rings. Obviously the rings spin inside, but you just try to get everything in a crosshatch position. Okay. 
okay this this ring compressor is very filthy it's very old hopefully it does a trick i'm not gonna be in a good clean the ring compressor has to be very clean when you're doing this i'm gonna get myself a good cloth closet Make sure your ring compressor is nice and clean in, on the inside. Make sure that your piston is nice and clean. Now that my rings are in place, remember what I, got, I told you guys, ring gap must be on this end, ring gap must be on that end for your main compression rings. Put this over gently. Doesn't have to go full. Then we're going to tighten. Make sure that it's nice and tight, it can't get any more tight. You're going to make sure that the cylinder ball is nice and clean. Take your brake cleaner, give it a good wipe. Usually you would hone the cylinder, but like I said, this is on a budget. I already know the ball is slightly damaged. But please, if you guys are rebuilding your engine, you have to hone the cylinder ball with a honing tool because you need nice cross hatches. That is how oil settles on the ball. So that is very important. You have to have that. You need to make sure that your crank is at bottom dead center for piston number one. It needs to be right down. right down. I'm going to take my piston, move a bit far. We do it properly. I'm going to situate it like that, gently with it. And that's it. The piston is back into the ball. So, this is your corn rod, right? This is your, your cap for the corn rod. I want you guys to know something. This side of the corn rod, can you see where the notch is? It always faces the grill of the car. So let's just say we are the grill now where the camera is. It's facing the front of the engine. Because the corn rod, when you went inside, see where the notch is? The notch is here, it's also facing the front. So this is in the front of the engine, and this side is on the front of the engine as well. So, remember I'm using the same bearing because they're not bad at all. Remember, you'll see like uh, burn spots and wear and stuff on a bad bearing, but this is okay. So, I'm just going to give this a bit of spray there. Take my bearing, clean it up. To oil, you need to put some oil on the bearing. So, put my oil there so it's nice and smooth. Where the notch is, can you see there's a notch on the bearing? You need to face the notch, you need to lock here. Like so. Right. And now I'm going to go under the car 
and I'm going to put this bearing on the top of the corn rod which is there I'm still going to put some oil there and I'm still going to put the notch in the right place the notch is there so the bearing doesn't spin you not like spin completely it locks it into place okay I'm underneath the vehicle now you can see your crankshaft needs to be smooth like literally smooth like a baby's bum you cannot have any rough spots or even if it has slight like scuffing on it you need to polish it but in this case the crankshaft is very smooth and let's begin to clean up then I'm taking a clean cloth and I'm wiping it down make sure wipe on all sides make sure the journals doesn't have no dirt the crankshaft journal doesn't have no dirt nice and smooth now see I'm holding my corn rod I'm gonna push it down pull it down pull it down pull it down that's where I want it because now that it's down you can see it's it's, it's flush against the crank the crank I'm going to slide my bearing from the back into it Can you see I got the bearing in its place there? Right. There's it there, it's locked inside. Wasn't videoing. <laughs> okay guys, I got my torque spanner here. And the torque setting is you're gonna take a you're gonna take a ratchet. Not a ratchet, sorry, you're gonna take your 14 millimeter socket with an extension, and then the torque setting is supposed to be 30 newton meters on each nut and then you're going to do 90 degree 90 degree but my Tox spanner here doesn't have the, the most it goes to is 40 newton meters so i set it to 40 and i just talked it to that i did it off camera because it was difficult to get under with the phone or with the camera and with the talk spanner so i did it that way there just 40 newton meters straight 